Let's talk about Tinkercad circuits. What is Tinkercad circuits? It's a lot. I am not going to be able to explain it all in this intro video, but you'll learn more as you play with it and as you look at some of my other videos about it. So as an overview, what we have is just a bunch of circuit stuff here, discrete components that you can use to build your circuits. So I'll just scroll down here real quickly and you just kind of get an idea of what's in here. And then we'll putz around with some of these things. So you've got all these discrete components that you can use and you can build and test your own circuits using software. So you can, number one, test your own design ideas. You can try different design ideas and you can test components and you don't have to worry about making mistakes. You don't have to worry about burning components out if you do something wrong because it's all software based. And so what we're doing here is we're looking at the opening page. Once you log in, create an account, log in, you will get to what's called the dashboard. And here you can see I've got a bunch of circuits here in my dashboard that I've been playing around with. And this is what you'll have too once you get going in this program. But it's all cloud-based, meaning it's all on the internet. It's all web-based. You don't do this on your own computer if you're not connected to the internet. You do need to be connected in order to use this program. So those are really great features of this program. So let's try building something. You know, typically in the real world, in the physical world, when you're working on a hobby at your kitchen table or your workbench or whatever, you would either just kind of solder pieces together or you would hopefully be using a breadboard to build your circuits. Makes it much easier to move things around. So let's start with a breadboard. Tinkercad provides a breadboard for us and I'm going to use the small breadboard. So I click on it and drag it out. And let's say that I just want to do a, a quick and easy little um, LED circuit. And I'm going to type in LED and then I can choose that off the list. And here's an LED I can use. And so I'm going to click and hold and drag that out. And it automatically places it in a couple of holes in the breadboard. And to understand breadboards well, see my other video on breadboards. But for now, let's just get through this intro and kind of give you an overview of how this all works out. So then I want to put a resistor in here so I don't burn out my LED. So I'm going to type in RES. And I'm just going to click on resistor here. And I'm going to pull a resistor out here and put that on my breadboard. And then I need a power supply. So I will type that in. And of course, you know, you can scroll through these things and you can find stuff by scrolling through, but that's a lot of extra work, I think. So I'm just going to type that in. P-O-W, see how I do. Let's see. Okay, and I don't have to click on anything here. I can see that it showed up down here. So I'm going to drag that out. And now I'm ready to go. I can build a circuit. I can just run some wires from my power supply to my circuit on my breadboard. So that's what I'm going to do next. I am going to just click on my negative lead of my power supply, click and let go, and then I can start dragging wires around. And I'm going to do this just very quickly. I'm going to put my negative lead over here, and then I'm going to connect my positive lead over here. And now if I did everything correctly, I should be able to run this program by doing something called start a simulation. So if I click on that, we can see that our power supply is, is by default, it's five volts. And it shows me that I've got three milliamps running through my circuit. And so here, not only is that just a beautiful thing about this simulation software, I can't emphasize that enough. Look at how wonderful this is just to be able to do this online and not have to mess around with components and, uh, you know, like fish through your parts tray like I do and try to find resistors and LEDs and and then if you don't like the resistor that you've used, then you have to use Ohm's law to calculate the right resistor. Where in this software, you can just swap resistors and see what happens. So I just know that a red LED uh, maximum current is typically about 20 milliamps. We're only running 3 milliamps right now. If I want to get that closer to 20 milliamps, so I have full brightness on that LED. In the real world, I would need to recalculate that resistor. So I'd have to know resistor color codes, and I'd have to know Ohm's law, and I'd have to have the right resistors on hand. None of that is required using this software. So I'll just click on the resistor. Right now it's set at one kilo ohm. I'm going to change that. I want this thing to be brighter, so I'm going to reduce the resistance. Let's just try 10 ohms and see what happens. 
and then I just want 10 ohms, not 10K, so I'm going to change that to ohms. And look what happened. My LED has got a red star on it. it I just blew that LED up. <laughs> I just burned it out because my resistor is too small. It's drawing too much current. And that's the purpose of a resistor is to limit current in your circuit. And right now my meter tells me that I'm drawing 184 milliamps. And that LED is only supposed to have 20 milliamps max. So in the real world, had I done this, and I put a 10 ohm resistor in there, I would have burnt out my LED, and chances are very good I would have burnt out the resistor as well. So let's do this using the software and go, oh, that's a mistake. Let's change it. And I don't have to worry about burning anything out because this is all software. So let's change it, let's say 200 ohms. Let's try that. And now I can see I don't, I'm not blowing up my, my uh, LED anymore. The red explosion mark went away. And I can see by my meter, I'm only running 14.8 milliamps. Remember, 20 milliamps is the max. So I'm at a pretty good level of current right now by choosing a 200 ohm resistor. And I didn't have to worry about blowing up components. I didn't have to fish in my parts drawer. I didn't have to calculate using Ohm's law. None of that. That's how beautiful this software is in mocking up your circuits. It's just wonderful stuff. And if you want to get a little cleaner with some of your leads here, which I typically do, you have to stop the simulation. And then you can come down here and you can double click on one of your leads and you insert a new point there. And then you can just kind of clean this stuff up a little bit. So you can do all sorts of manipulation in here. And again, with no risk and with infinite possibilities for trying different combinations of stuff. So let's take a quick look and see what other kind of stuff we have in here. They've got uh, some pre-filtered choices, like if I choose basic, it will show me basic components here. Got a push button and a potentiometer, capacitor, 9 volt battery, there's my breadboard. Vibration motor, DC motor, transistors, a regular DC motor, all sorts of great stuff in the basic components. And then you can show them all if you want to, and let's just quickly go through that. There's a lot of them. So you can experiment with all of these components and you can learn about electronics. You can try your ideas out. Uh, it's just all sorts of wonderful things in this program. I just love it. And then what else is up here? Uh, they got something called starter kits. So if you choose the basic here, they've got basic starter kits. So here you could just try to light up an LED. So you can click on this thing and you can drag this out here. And then you have got a coin battery, a three volt coin battery, and a resistor and an LED. And then you can start this simulation. And my other one's running over here at the same time. And then on my coin battery thing, I am seeing that my LED lit up. So that's just a starter for you. You can, you can use that as just to get started on your own projects. If you're not sure what you want to go with, you can use some of these basic starter kits. Let's try one or two others here. I'm going to just get rid of, I'm going to stop the simulation and then I'm just going to get rid of these things. And so we've got a clean slate here. And let's see what else we have. Oh, here's something that's got a lot, lot of activity on it. Let's see what that is. Holy mackerel. So that's a bunch of LEDs, different colored LEDs, and some push button switches. And if we start that simulation, we can actually use the push buttons. If I click on this button, it's a momentary switch. You gotta hold it down to keep it active, or you can just click and let go. So if I hold it down, I can look and see what's going on here. If I come over here and hold this one down, I can see what that's all about. And I click on this one and see what that's all about. And then you can use these, like, like they say, they're starter things here. So if you don't like how bright this green LED is, what you can do is you can click on that resistor and you can just change its value. Let's change that value to, uh, I don't know, 900 ohms. And then we'll click on it again. And supposedly it's not as bright as it was a minute ago. Let's make it 1900 ohms. Let's see what that does. And now I'll click on it. Okay. And let's make it 10,000 ohms and see what that does. There, it's a lot dimmer. So finally, <laughs> and notice how it changed the the resistor color code. It actually changes those, so you can you can maybe use this to learn resistor color codes, which is an excellent idea. You can see the other two color codes that have remained unchanged. And then, if you don't like the push button switch, you can change that. You can click on that, 
uh, stop the simulation first and then you can click on that push button and you can press the delete key on your keyboard and you can put a different kind of switch in there you could put a slide switch in there if you wanted to so it would be on you don't have to hold it on so let's try switch sw there's a slide switch so i'm going to click on that to show me where those are here we go and then i'm going to drag that out and then i can connect that slide switch in here i'll click on a terminal here and put a lead here and i'll click on this terminal and put a lead over here and let's see how that goes. Now let's run the simulation and turn the switch on and off and nothing happens. So again, it's just a beautiful way for you to experiment with your circuitry. And it's much easier to solve mistakes here as it would be in the real world using wires or a breadboard. And one of the things that I like is, is the undo button. I'm going to undo a bunch of these. I'm going to go up here and choose undo or control Z on your keyboard will do it. And I'm going to put this back the way it was and see where that wire was. Oh, look at that. The wire was over here on the positive terminal. So I'm going to do control Y to forward again here. And then I'm going to put my new switch in control Y again and control Y again. And then this part of the switch went over here to the positive terminal. So I'll connect that and let's see if we run that simulation now and turn that switch on and off. Now it works. Just beautiful, wonderful, easy techniques you can use in this circuitry. What else have we got for starters here? Let me stop the simulation. Oh, Arduino. You, oh, how could I forget the Arduino? Blink. That's the real common Arduino starter program trial where you've got an Arduino. You know, Arduino makes many different kinds. They use the UNO in this program. And so the standard blink program is off pin 13, goes through a resistor into an LED. It's also got an onboard LED that lights. Let's run this and see what's going on. So here you can see the blink program. The, uh, the LED is blinking and the onboard LED is blinking. This is just a wonderful tool. Look at all these starter packs you've got to get you started building Arduino circuits. You can even do the... Uh, Adafruit NeoPixel stuff, do an LCD display, all sorts of great stuff. What you can do that's even more magical is you can look at the code. I'm going to stop this simulation, and if you click on the code button up here, look at this. You can actually code your Arduino right here on the screen. And they're using something called blocks. And I, when I first was exposed to blocks, I thought they were just for children's games. And that actually is where they started as an easy way for kids to learn how to program without having to learn actual programming language. But it's turned out to be a really helpful thing, even for people who are, you know, intermediate uh, programming people. I don't know about intermediate, but well, perhaps. Anyhow, it's an easy way to try your programming. And so we can look and see in our blocks, we can see how that's built. We can see that they set the LED, the built-in LED to high, so it's going to be lit. And then it's going to wait one second. And then there's a comment that you can put in your programming and then set the built-in LED to low. So uh, it's just mind-boggling uh, power and simplicity in Tinkercad circuits. But wait, there's more. <laughs> you can actually look at your coding if you want to go with the actual Arduino program, the actual Arduino software, you can learn about programming by using these blocks. You can learn how to program. That certainly will help you learn. And you can modify your program here. If you want that thing to go instead of one second, you can make it go two seconds. Heading over to your blocks and changing that one second to say two seconds. And now if we run the simulation, Let's close the code window. Now this thing should be on for two seconds and off for one. So that's how easy it is to try your different code on your Arduino. It's just awesome stuff. And then and you can download this code and you can actually run it then in the physical world. You can, you can uh, put it on your own Arduino board on your workbench and on your own local computer so it's no longer in this software, well, still in this software, but you've got it locally on your computer, so you don't need to be connected to the internet anymore to run this on your own Arduino. And then finally, you can do just the uh, text. I want just the text. And it tells me I'm going to lose my blocks if I continue. <laughs> I've been told that more than once. 
And now I've got just the raw code, but not the, the building blocks. And so now in here, I could change this code. Let's say I want to make that back to one second. I can just type that in here, and then I can rerun this. And this should be back to one second on, one second off. What else do I want to tell you about Tinkercad circuits? You can export. If you click on the export button, you can actually build PCB circuit boards. Eagle is a real common circuit board building software. You can download your software for that. And I think that's all I want to cover as an introduction to Tinkercad circuits. Just know that we only scratch the surface. See my other videos that will go into detail about using many of these components. I have lots of circuitry about these kinds of components. And then when you're done with whatever electronic circuitry you want to build, then you can switch over to another part of Tinkercad. You can get out of the circuits portion of Tinkercad, and then you can go in and you can actually build 3D designs. You can learn how to, or again, just use this to experiment, but you can build 3D stuff for your 3D printer. Uh, it's just a fantastic little program to get started with. And if you like this tutorial, please give it a like. And if you want to see more of the videos that I do on this as I upload them, be sure and click the subscribe box and then click on that bell and choose all. See you in the next video.